Good morning, and welcome to Living Springs Christian Fellowship. My name is Spencer, and I'd like to invite you all to our Sunday morning service here at 10 a.m., as well as Monday evenings at 7 p.m., we offer a Bible study here virtually as well. You can also visit our website at www.livingspringschristianfellowship.org, where you can give, learn about upcoming ministries, and also learn about upcoming events. Now, I ask that you all prepare your hearts and minds as we enter into Sunday morning worship. Welcome in this house today. We want you to be blessed. We pray you'll experience the Spirit of the Lord and the fullness thereof. In this house you find love, you find joy. Hear the word as we praise in the Lord. Welcome in this house. We want you to be blessed, we pray. Welcome to Living Springs, this dwelling place. Welcome to Living Springs, this dwelling place. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Glad to be here to thank God for all that he's done for us this week. Thank you for allowing us to get here on today with the time change and the weather being the way that it is. We just thank you, Lord, for just being who you are in our lives. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for your love, your kindness, your patience with us, Father. We just thank you for being who you are, Lord. We just ask that you would just be with us today. We ask that you would just wrap your arms around us on today, Father. And we just give you all the praise. We give you glory and honor. Just ask that you will bless those that are on their way. Those that are virtually watching us, bless each and every family on this morning, Father. We ask that you will bless the leader of this house. Um, give him a divine word to, for him to relate to us, Father, straight from you. Give him a double portion of your anointing on this morning, Father. Holy Spirit, rain down on us in a very special and mighty way on today. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you. We give you praise for all that you do because you are a great God. How great is our God. He is a great and mighty God. We ask that you would just stand with us and if you're able to, and join in with us as we um, just give praise and worship to his name this morning. Amen. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God.
hands to the Lord right now. As we are entering to worship right now, let's lift our hands to him. God, you deserve the glory, the honor, the praise that we can give you today. God, you are worthy. Without question, God, you have been good to us. You have been merciful to us. You've been kind to us. God, we thank you and we bless you today. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Come on, put our hands together.
Website now, livingspringschristianfellowship.org, and you can give there. And let me remind you, let me remind you, the last two Sundays, the building was full celebrating my anniversary. Listen, this message this morning will help you to understand that better. The church should still be full, whether it's my anniversary or not. Let's not get this thing twisted, amen? So... This morning's message, I believe, will help you to get some better perspective. Amen? Amen. 
but we believe and understand clearly that I can't be here unless there is a purpose and plan behind God's plan. And that plan is that I would preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and share it with you so that your lives can grow and your lives can be better. Amen. Amen. So don't get confused. I am not the one that you should be worshiping. It should be the mighty God. And so I, I want to make that clear because, again, last two Sundays, the church was packed. Amen. Amen. Let's not confuse things. Amen. I know there was a time change. Amen. But if you had to go to work, you would have found a way to get there on time. Amen. Amen. So those of you who are watching online. Pastor just talked about you, so you can go change your membership because you're mad. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Y'all can't even laugh. <laughs> Whew. All right, let's pray as we prepare to give. Amen. Father, we thank you now for, again, this time that we have to give. God, I pray now that each person that you have blessed with substance, that they would give, gr not grudgingly nor of necessity, for you said you love a cheerful giver. God, it is your plan that we give of our substance. Not because of the monetary value, but the value that it is to us. You've asked us to sacrifice something towards the kingdom. And so, God, we thank you now for the chance that we have to give in your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Quick question, a uh, quick um, announcement, rather. On um, the fourth Sunday, the fourth Sunday in this month, um, I have to preach at... Fresh Start Church in Vallejo, so I ask that you would pray for me as I go there and preach for Pastor Shamar Lewis, amen? amen? And we are grateful to God to have a fellowship, a brotherhood, and so whenever he asks me to come, I do come and support him over there, amen? amen. So praying for me on that Sunday. Um, also, I'm going to remind everyone that Bible study is every Monday night online. Those of you that want to join us, join us at 7 p.m. online. Our Bible study usually is more, no more than 25 to 30 minutes, so please join us each Monday evening at 7 p.m. And then also on Monday mornings online, you can join us for prayer. I'm asking that you continue to pray for families that have lost loved ones, those that are sick. We don't always know if you don't tell me the names of those who are sick, but just know that I pray for those names even that I may not know. But members, if you find out one of the members of our church is either sick or has lost a loved one, please, please inform me. Amen. Amen. For those of you that have your Bibles, if you would get them ready, go with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Still continuing Amen. our series on attachments and assignments. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Amen. Just a reminder to parents for our children's church. Our children's church, children's church begins at 10 a.m., so if you have your children that you want them to attend children's church, you can take them straight over to the children's room and sign them in. It does begin immediately at 10 a.m. My wife is over there teaching the, today, and um, uh, one of our young people is assisting her, so if your children want to be a part of children's church, they can do so. Amen? Amen. First Corinthians chapter 1. I actually, I'm going to read starting at verse 1, but I'm actually going to focus on verses 10 through 18. But let's start at verse 1. It says, Paul called to be an apostle through the will of God, to, to Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, and to those who are sanctified in Christ. Called to be saints with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God always concerning you for the grace of God which is given to you by Christ Jesus, that you are enriched in everything by him in all utterance and knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you may, uh, so that you may come short in no gift eagerly awaiting for the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is where I want to focus right here. It says, who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing that there be no divisions among you and that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been declared to me concerning you 
my brethren, but those of the uh, of the Chloe, of Chloe's household and those there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, lest anyone should say that I am baptized in my own name. Let me stop right there. Again, I want to talk to you this morning from this subject attached to the person or assigned to the purpose. Attached to the person or assigned to the purpose. Let's pray. Father, we thank you now for this time that we have to come together in this place, those who are joining us virtually as well, that we can hear your word. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that your word will go forth with power, that the people of God will receive it. Let your Holy Spirit speak. God, whatever's in me that's not like you, my thoughts, my deeds, whatever is not like you, move it now by your power that I may declare your word and that your people may receive it. And God, most of all, let us all obey it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. When I was growing up, most of you might be able to relate to this. I'm old enough to say this, but I'm young enough to also know what goes on today. Amen. But when I was a kid, you would be out on the play playground, right? And you would be playing kickball. Anybody know what kickball is? Yeah. And, and I remember when it came time to play kickball, people would line up on the fence, and those who were the captains had the choice to choose the team that they wanted to be on, right? And, and if you knew that a particular person was good at the game, you wanted them on your team. Come on. And, and, and the worst thing could be was to be the last person picked. Come on, somebody. Though that was the worst. You knew that you were not that good if you were the last person picked. Come on. So, so you would line up. You say, I want that one. I want that one. I want that one, right? But it was all based upon your performance. Yeah. And, and I don't know about you, but we live in what's called a meritocracy. We live in a world where we are judged and we are measured by our performance. And the challenge comes down to this, that sometimes we don't always perform up to the level of our expect of the people's expectation. So sometimes we find being disappointed because those who are our performers are not doing what they normally do. OK, let me share this with you about about three, four years ago. Um, my wife and I decided to go see um, uh, uh, Music Soul Child at uh, Yoshi's. Now, now you know, I mean, you know, music soul child, y'all. I mean, you know, he's neo soul. I mean, you know, the, the brother can blow, right? You, and you know, when you go, you expect them to sing like they do. Now, I, now see, listen, Jill Scott, me and my wife gone Jill Scott before. See, I don't like Jill Scott in concert. Let me tell you why. She changes her songs. She don't sing them the way they sound. And I don't like it. Because you go with an expectation of performance. So here we are, we're at Yoshi's. You know, Yoshi's a very, very intimate kind of place. Yeah, I listen to soul music, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm saved and I'm a preacher. Oh, okay, anyway. So we're here and we're listening to music soul child. And, and, and I was like... Yeah, I feel that. It just wasn't... You know, but he, he ended up explaining at the end that he had had concerts back to back and this was his last one. So he was kind of wore out at that point. But, but here is the point. I, my expectation of his performance left me disappointed, though I know he can still sing, y'all didn't catch it. See, what's happening here in the scripture is so important because it's dealing with a problem that still exists in the body of Christ today. We have what are called our super saints. We have our popular preachers. We have, you know, the people that we'll go pay to go see right. preach. Amen. And, and, you know, we, 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 whether we accept it or not, we get caught up into personalities. Come on, somebody. If I told everybody last Sunday that this Sunday T.D. Jakes was going to be here, we would not have room. We'd have to knock out walls. Come on, somebody. Because we get caught up into the person. Listen to me. But here's the challenge. We got to not confuse the person with the purpose. Because, see, here is the bottom line. It is the message of Jesus Christ of salvation to the world that's the most important person that we ought to be pushing. Come on, somebody. 
it's nothing wrong with honoring your spiritual leaders as you did for me the last couple of weeks. But can I share something with you? Don't get caught up into me, the person, because guess what? The person might disappoint you. Listen, let me share something with you. Let me share. Something. My wife is probably the sweetest, kindest person that I know on earth. She she just she, she, she don't never get mad. She just always like this, which is a little maniacal. It's a little, you know, a little kind of scares me a little bit because she always, you know, always happy and all that. But you know, I'll be wondering behind, you know, and she's like, I wanna knock him out, you know. She probably does. Yeah, amen. But you ain't married to me, so be quiet. Listen. Here is my point. What I understand through looking at the scripture, we'll get into it, is that what was happening in the early church is still happening today, that the church had become divided over personalities. Can I share something with you? Be careful of getting caught into people's personalities because guess what? What if their performance that day doesn't live up to what you're used to? It, it doesn't change who their purpose is. It doesn't change their power. It just might be a different... Come on, somebody. So, so let, let's deal with this. Let's first of all begin with the purpose. See, see um, Paul lays out something very clear here about each of these people that they needed to know. In verse 8, he says... Whom also you will confirm to the end that you may be blameless until the day of Jesus Christ. Here's the key. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The first thing he establishes is the purpose for each one of us is that we were called into the fellowship of Jesus Christ by him. Amen. Not, not by me. Come on, somebody. Not by T.D. Jakes. Not by Creflo Dollar. You were called into to the body of Christ through Jesus Christ through the power of his Holy Spirit and when you get that understanding then you won't get things twisted because here's the bottom line I didn't die for you come on somebody I heard all the wonderful things you said and that was wonderful and they were true and I'm a servant of God but listen to me I did not die for you Jesus Christ is the center of our attention. He ought to be the sole purpose for why we gather. He ought to be the sole purpose for why we serve. And guess what? Those who serve are just the personalities that God uses to get the message across. Listen, if you look throughout the scriptures, especially if you do a study, we did this at one point, maybe we'll do it again in Bible study. We did a study on the disciples and we talked about their different personalities. Now, here's the challenge. Most of us in, in this day would be challenged if they were still in living in this day. Amen. If you look at the Apostle Paul, some of y'all couldn't stand Paul because Paul preached long sermons. <laughs> You don't believe me? Paul preached a sermon in the Bible so long one time that a little boy fell asleep and fell out the window and broke his neck and died. Some of y'all fall asleep, I'll preach for five minutes. I mean, literally, Paul preached so long, this young boy, his name was Eutychus. Look it up in the Bible. He fell out the window because he fell asleep and died. Paul also, we don't know what it was, whether it was a physical uh, deformity or physical ailment or it was emotional. Paul had a problem, y'all. He talked about a thorn in his flesh that bothered him. He didn't know what it was. Come on, somebody. Now, can you imagine this? Listen, listen. Paul also was a single man. Paul also was one who challenged people and he challenged them in their flesh. Come on, somebody. You would not have let Paul as your pastor today because you wouldn't like what he had to say. And he preached too long. Peter, y'all know about Peter? Peter was hood. He carried a pocket knife. And when things got crazy, Peter pulled a knife out and chopped the man's ear off. Okay, maybe I need to do the study again. Y'all read through these. And then, then there was one named James who actually happened to be the brother of Jesus. And he didn't believe who his brother was because he was too close by familiarity. Come on, somebody. There was Matthew. Y'all don't know about Matthew. Matthew was what was called a publican. He was a tax collector. And Matthew was corrupt. Do you know Matthew would charge, if you owe $5, guess what? Matthew charged you 10 and he lined his pockets. And guess what? He was a disciple. 
That's why when some of y'all come up to me and say, Pastor, oh, I forgot to put in the offer. Here's my offer. I said, like, hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> Don't, if you've done it, you, I said, hold up. Wait a minute. Let me fill out an envelope, put your name on, and give it to the finance ministry and let you see me doing it. And say, so, oh, Pastor, I trust you. It don't matter whether you trust me or not. I don't trust what somebody else might see and might say. Here's my point. I'm getting into the message. You have to be careful that the personality does not become the driving force behind how you serve. And, and he said, look, first of all, you are all called by Jesus Christ. You are called by his son into the fellowship of his son. Our church is called Living Springs Christian Fellowship. There ought to be a unity in faith and belief. Not because you drive a red car, I drive a black car. You drive a green car, she drives a white car. You wear Christian Louboutins, I wear uh, Crest Specials. See, y'all even know what Crest is. That's how it gets me. Crest used to be a store where poor people went. Come on, somebody. See, we divide over stupid stuff. We divide over, listen, we, we divide over what color the chairs are going to be, what color the walls are going to be. Come on, somebody. We divide over who's speaking and who's not speaking. Come on. We get caught up in the stuff that does not matter. If the message of Christ is being preached by a dog, you ought to be able to say amen just because he's standing on four legs. So the purpose is that we're called into the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Now look what he says here in verse 10. This is very important. He says, look, now I beg you. You see this? Are y'all with me? Amen. He says, I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and same judgment. I'm still dealing with my first point is the purpose. He says, I ask that you speak the same thing. Yes. Now, listen, now I know, so don't nobody get upset when I say this. I hear in our church, people divide more over their teams than they are over unity in Christ. Amen. <laughs> you got the Lakers people, and you got the Warriors people. You got the 49ers people, come on somebody. And then you got the Raiders people. And a got a got a nerd had a few Dallas folk up in here. And people y'all hear people after church. Oh, we with you. Your team this, your team, y'all ain't gonna do that, blah, 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 blah. You know how we do, and I've done it too. Now, I know that's all in good fun, but imagine if we can divide over simple things like that, how much we can divide over things that are essential. I, I shared with you all one time, and I'm almost done. Hey, man, getting out of church early today. Listen, um, I, I shared with you one time, I preached in Berkeley at a very traditional church. Many of the choir members were there with me. Some of the members were there as well. And I remember I preached at this church, preached there a few times, and it's other particular church that was there, this particular pastor who's an older guy, and um, I remember, because this is how I dress. Amen. Amen. I, you might find me in sweats. Amen. I'm, you know, I'm not in a three-piece suit, a robe, and all that. That's just not me. Amen. Now, those who do it, that's their business. No problem. I've got a problem with it. I just don't believe that it serves any purpose. And I sweat too much. I don't want to wear a robe. <laughs> but look, we had gone there and I preached the sermon. Y'all remember this? Yeah. I preached the sermon. And after I preached the sermon, the older pastor who was there, not the pastor of the church, but one of the guest pastors, got up and said, I ain't never heard nobody preach like that with his shirt tails hanging out. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Her? Like, what did that have to do with the message of Jesus Christ? Listen, if a person is called to stand on East 14th and preach the gospel on the corner and people think they're crazy but they're preaching the truth, then guess what? They ought to unite over the purpose and plan of Jesus Christ rather than the package. But we like packaging, y'all. We, Oh, my God. Can I tell y'all? I'm being real transparent today. I'm sorry. I had a pastor friend of mine call me and say, man, man, it was your 23rd anniversary and you was up there wearing some jeans. I'm going to take you shopping. We're going to go shopping so you can look nice for your anniversary. I'm like, what? Who cares? Like, 
y'all know me. That has never. I, I wear the same jeans every Sunday. I know some of y'all didn't notice it. Big deal. I'm just. I'm not. Listen. It ain't got to be Gucci, Pucci, or nothing else. Look. As long as they clean and I'm comfortable, we good. Cause I didn't come here for that. Now my boy who came to preach last Sunday, I mean, he was. He was late, and that's great, but that's him, that's not me. But we'll divide over silly things that don't matter. Listen, the Bible says, he says, look, I pray that you speak the same thing. What is he talking about? It doesn't mean that you all agree and wear the same clothes or go to the same places to eat or agree on everything in the world and all that. That's why you never hear me talk about politics. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Look, if you start talking more about uh, the po politics of the world and all these things that are going on rather than Jesus Christ, there is a problem. Right. Listen, he said that you speak the same thing, meaning that we agree that what he said in the verse before, that we were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's what we ought to agree on. We, look, we can divide over everything else, whether women wear pants, whether women should preach. All that stuff is not essential to the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you're not preaching to me that Jesus Christ is the way to the Father and that through his death on the cross that he gave us life that we did not deserve and through his blood he rose on the third day and he now sits at the right hand of the father and makes intercession for us and through faith in him no other way not through your money not through anything else but in faith in him I have eternal life that's essential can I share something with you be careful that people don't experience your church culture more than they experience your Christ culture You know, because every church has a way they do things, right? Now, I'm grateful that one of the things our church is known for is hospitality. Well, that is Christ-like, amen? But, but we should not be known for anything more than foundationally our purpose. So my first point was a purpose, but here is the problem. Look at verse 11. Purpose, now dealing with the problem. He says, look, it has been declared to me, verse 11, concerning you, my brethren, but by those of, the Clo of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. He said, you know what? And, and can I tell you the backstory of this? There, there were some women in this particular church who didn't like each other. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> they had a problem. And because they had a problem, when one came in, she sat on one side of the church. And when another one came in, she sat on the other side of the church. And she made sure, the one on one side, made sure that everybody who was on her side knew about the one that was on that side over something silly. No, really, really, that, that's the background. There was contention over silly stuff. Can't say amen, say ouch. Listen, if I'm in Christ, that doesn't mean I have to like everything you do or the way you do it or how you say it. Come on, somebody. But I love you because you are in the same fellowship as I am. Listen here. And the other part about it is if we can agree that we are both both sinners saved by grace and that your sin, your issues, your personality, your cracks and your quirks are no better than mine. I just notice yours better more than I notice mine. <laughs> See, because that's what it really comes down to. It's called projection. Oh, I'm sorry. Listen, he says this. He says, there's contentions, and these, the, the household, it's reported to me by the household of Chloe that there are contentions among you. Now, here's the key. He's going to get into it. He said, they, 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 he, Paul, Paul names the problem. He says, now I say this. Each of you says, I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. I'm of Cephas. Or I'm of Christ. Yeah. You, you know what they were arguing over? They were arguing over their pastors. They, they were talking about their pastors more than they were talking about Christ. They were letting everybody know, my pastor is Reverend John, Big J, D, 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 E, D, G, G, and I go to Double Rock, Triple Rock Baptist Church over here, and we doing this, and we, come, you know, you know how we do. They were talking about the personhood, the personalities of those who they came to Christ through. Here's the problem. That's the problem there. They came to God 
often through the person rather than through the purpose that the person was preaching. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So if you follow John Adams Jr., that's fine as long as I'm following Christ. Because then when I do something wrong, you can look above me and still see Christ. When I get too low, you can look below me and still see the rock that is Jesus Christ. Come on. When I act up, you can look around me and still see Jesus. Because guess what? I'm human just like you are, and I'm going to mess up. See, you got to be careful. Don't, don't put anybody in spiritual age. I'm not just talking about me. Don't put anybody in spirit. But I'm your pastor, so I'm talking about me then. Uh, don't put me too high. Come on, somebody. Because you put me too high, then you can't see God. And then when I disappoint you, then there is a problem. He says, they were arguing. He says, I'm of Apollos. I'm of Cephas. And he says, or I'm of Christ. Now, this is the, 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 the here. Now, so we looked at the purpose. We looked at the problem. But let's look at the proclamation. Paul says to them, is Christ divided? Y'all hearing me? Right. They just named all who their spiritual leaders were. But now Paul says, is Christ divided? And then Paul includes himself because he knew Paul was popular. Paul says, look. Was Paul crucified for you? Listen, I love y'all with all my heart. I will go to the moon for y'all. I, I do. And have gone to the moon and a few other planets for some of y'all. But hold up. Ain't but one person in this church I would die for, and that's my wife. And guess what? I might have to think about that too. I love her, but listen to y'all, listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. She's not God. I, I just preached from this, this past passage a few weeks ago um, um, where, where Paul, I mean, where God called Abram to sacrifice his son. The son that God promised him, the, the, the promise, the, you know, the son that God had given him in his old age. He was he was desperate, desperate being a man of Jewish descendants and didn't have a son. And God gave him this precious gift of a son. And then God said, now I want you to kill him. You know why? Because God is trying to teach each one of us. Don't ever get so caught up in the person that you forget the purpose behind why the person was sent. Paul says. Was Paul crucified for you or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Wow. He's making a powerful proclamation. He said, look, y'all need to get this thing straight. Let's not get it twisted. Were you baptized in Paul's name or what? Listen, I've seen people and I've, it's sad to see. I've seen churches that when their pastor has died, they lose sight of Christ. I've seen people when pastors have left, they stop going to church. I've seen people where pastors have had moral failure. They have given up on God because they looked at God through the man. I've seen it too much. And listen, I, 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 oh, I'm not going to say that because I'm careful. I, I've heard people all the time, pastors, say, if, if this is my last time I preach, I, God, please. I want to see Jesus, but not today. I want him to do a few more things. Listen. But here's the thing. He says, look, was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? He says, look. Oh, Paul, I love this. Paul just lays it out. He says, look, I'm glad I didn't baptize none of y'all except Crispus and Gaius. It's in there. And, you know, he's like, because y'all tripping. Y'all bragging about your pastors. He said, look, I'm glad I didn't baptize none of y'all. Excuse my vernacular. I do have an education. He says, look, here's why he says this. Lest anyone should say that I had baptized in my own name. He says, I never want to be guilty of making you think that I think that I am God. 
He says, I never want you to think that I am the person who gave my life or sacrificed for you or gave you the gift of salvation. I don't ever want you to get it twisted. I loved it and uh, was uh, encouraged by everything everyone said about me uh, for these 23 years, and I'm grateful to it, and I'm going to continue to serve. But listen, I don't want you to get it twisted. He says, look, lest any of you would say that I baptize you in my own name. He says, yes, I also baptized the house of Stephanus. Besides, I don't know whether I baptize any other. He said, for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross should be made of non-effect. Listen, when you go to seminary or you attend any kind of Bible uh, classes or training, especially for those who are preachers, there are things that they teach you in preaching. There's something called alliteration. I just did it today. Purpose, problem, proclamation. It's called alliteration. So when you leave here, you can remember it easier. Amen. There are things they teach you, right? And, and sometimes they also teach you certain words you can use that capture the attention of people. But he says, look, I'm preaching the gospel to you because what I don't want to do is use words so that the words become more powerful than the message. Yeah, yeah. Right. Y'all hear me? Yeah. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> See, now, now y'all do not attend the potter's house, but you know it. Yeah. See how words? Yep. And, and you can be caught up. Get ready for what is what I want to know. I'm sorry if T.D. Jakes is your, your TV pastor. You can be victorious. You're an overcomer. That's all wonderful, but here's the problem. At the end of the day, can you give me the word? To when I'm faced with difficult situations, yes, the first person I call is not my pastor, but on Christ. Can you give me the word to the place where I can stand on the truth if I can't get to my pastor? Can you give me the word to where the Bible says, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you? Do I have to walk around with a Bible big enough for 10 people to carry to show that I'm a believer? No, because if I have the word in my heart and the purpose of the word in my heart, then I don't have to get caught up in the person. Because see, whether you get it or not, I am called to pre preach and I'm called to pastor and to love people and to share with you God's word. But can I share something with you? The word of God is for me as well. Yes. Amen. Amen. And there's times I stand up here and preach and this word gets me. Yeah. And you don't even know it because I don't say ouch. Right. But it gets me yeah. Yeah. just like it gets you now. I said, Pastor, boy, what a message to preach after the high celebration of your anniversary to come back and talk about not getting caught up in the person but the purpose. Right, 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 right. right. God has his way of doing what he does yes, sir. Yes, sir. so that we can get to where he desires for us to be. Yes, Never get attached to the person that you forget the assignment of the purpose. God is sovereign. He is the one who sits on the throne. He is the only righteous God. And he teaches us through his word that his son is the way to the father. And he says, no man comes to the father except by him. So if anybody teaches you to do anything else through mantras or meditations or things of this new age, and see, we got to be careful because some of the new age has crept into the church. Anybody teaches you these mantras and things be more than the word of God, then guess what? Christ will have non-effect. Right, right, right. And if Christ is not at the center of what we do and what we believe, then we're just gathering in a building and wasting our time. 
Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you. We bless you now for this time. Thank you for what you have allowed us to hear, to know through your word. God, let your word be that which penetrates the heart of believers, that which convicts the hearts of those who are unsaved to call them out of darkness into light. Let your word be truth and man be called a lie. God, we thank you and bless you for this time that we've had together. In Jesus' name, while heads are bowed, if you're here today, and you have not given your life to Christ, or if you're in our, in our virtual audience and you have not given your life to Christ, I want to share with you that he says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus that God has raised him from the dead and believe in your heart, he says you shall be saved. He will come in if you receive him and ask him to come in and save you. And I tell you, sometimes when you accept Christ as Savior, that's when the pro problems often start. But here's the difference. Now you have him with you yes. to handle the problems. Amen. If you're out there in our virtual ends or if you're in here and you want to give your life to Christ, just pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you for being Lord. I ask that you would forgive me now of my sins. I receive you into my heart as Lord and Savior. I believe that you are the only way to the Father. And that through you, I have eternal life. Come into my heart, save me, and become my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. If you, in our virtual audience, prayed that prayer and you gave your life to Christ, just please connect with us. You can connect with us in person every Sunday morning here. If you are not able to, you can send us an email at livingspringsmail at gmail.com. Let us know that you've given your life to Christ and you want to be connected to a church. And it is important, believing um, uh, in Christ and, and, and um, giving him your life. But it's also important to be connected to a church where you can grow and that you can be developed in the word of God. For the Bible does teach us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It says, how can you hear without the preacher? There is a role that a pastor plays in your life to help encourage you. So I encourage you, get connected with a church where you can grow in God's will. God bless you. Remember, living springs where the word lives and your spirit is refreshed. Amen. Let's give our virtual audience a hand. Amen. Amen. Good morning. My name is Spencer Clark. We'd like to thank you for tuning in to our Sunday morning worship. But remember, stay tuned. Immediately following service, every Sunday, we hold children's ministry. Also, just as a general reminder, every Monday evening at 7 p.m., we hold Bible study. And if you tune into our website, www.livingspringschristianfellowship.org, you'll get more information regarding other ministries. So on behalf of Pastor John Adams and all of Living Springs congregation, we want to thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning into our worship. Goodbye. Welcome back to Living Springs Christian Fellowship. I am Sister Deborah, and today our lesson will be a three-car lesson titled, If You Say You Love God. So before we get started, let me give you this time to get all the materials you need, which is a pencil and paper and your Bible, of course. Great, and welcome back. So now that you have all the materials you need, 
like I mentioned before, this is a three part series. So today's lesson, we're going to title part one, the first and most important command. OK, and before we dive right into our Bibles and read the word of God, what do we do first, children? That's right. We open up in prayer. So close your eyes and bow your heads. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you for the God. Dear Lord, we come to you today asking that you please forgive us for our sins. Cleanse us and remove anything that's not like you. Open our hearts and our minds to receive your word so that we may understand it for correction, for growth and guidance. Thank you for the love. Thank you for giving us your son, Jesus. Thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great. So now, kids, let's get to our Bible. Okay, great. So in the Bible, in 1 John, John was one of Jesus' disciples. And when he was writing a letter to the church, he said to them, my dear friends, I'm not writing to give you a new commandment. It is the same one you were first given, and it is the message you heard. What is that commandment that he's talking about? What is that first commandment? Let's see what it is, okay? So in your Bibles, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 5, and we're going to start at verse 7 and read through verse 10, okay? Deuteronomy is in the Old Testament, okay? Great. So now that you're there, we're in Deuteronomy chapter 5, and we're going to start at verse 7, and that reads... Do not worship any God except me. Do not make idols that look like anything in the sky or on earth or in the ocean under the earth. Don't bow down and worship idols. I am the Lord your God and I demand all of your love. If you reject me and worship idols, I will punish your families for three or four generations. But if you love me and obey my laws, I will be kind to your families for thousands of generations. There we have it, kids. Now we know what's the first and most important command. And that is to have no other gods above God. There's only one, one true God. And one true God who gave us his one and only son, Jesus Christ. So we like movies, right? We know like um, Harry Potter and it shows all of like this magic or Marvel. And they talk about how those characters were blessed by God and, you know, they were given their powers or even Naruto. Those are all movies, right? And we know that movies are not real. They're just for entertainment, right? So we don't want to be too caught up in this cool movie magic that we start to believe that that is what God wants of us or that we're supposed to like start worshiping those characters. That's not what we're supposed to do because they're just characters. That's all they are, right? They're, they're just entertainment. But God who is real, living God, the creator of all things. He wants us to only love him and worship him. No idols, right? No other gods. There's only one true God. and He gave, gave us his one and only son, Jesus Christ, which is going to lead us into our next supporting scripture of that, okay? So let's go ahead and we're going to turn in our Bibles to 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 16, okay? Okay, great. So 1 John, Testament kids, okay? And we're going to start at verse 15. So 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 reads, Don't love the world or anything that belongs to the world. If you love the world, you cannot love the Father. Our foolish pride comes from this world, and so do our selfish desires and our desires to have everything we see. None of this comes from 
the father. See? So all of that movie magic and stuff, that's of the world, right? The world created that. And we're not supposed to be in love with that or or in line ourselves with that. We are to love God and him alone. And we can't do both, right? We can't do both. So we are to love God, him alone. There is only one father and he gave us his one and only son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. But think about it. Think how much the father loves us that he lets us be called his children as we truly are. We are God's children. So let's turn to our last scripture, and that's going to be in 1 John. So you stay in 1 John, okay? But now we're going to go to chapter 5, and we're going to read verses 3 through 5. Okay, so now we're in 1 John chapter 5, and we're going to start at verse 3, okay? And that reads, we show our love for God by obeying his commandments and they are not hard to follow every child of god can defeat the world and our faith is what gives us this victory no one can defeat the world without having faith in jesus christ as the son of god now as you see kids as we read the scriptures it lets us know how we can love God, how we can not only say that we love God, but how we can show that we love God. And the first and most important command to show that we love God is to put no other God, no idols before him, only worship him. And Jesus Christ, being the one and only son of God, helps us with that keeps us on the right track for that. And I know it's like, but it's kind of distracting, right? We see all of these movies and we see visually how cool they look. But see, Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, what did he leave with for us? The Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives us that gift of wisdom so we can tell what's real, right? Which is God and Jesus Christ and was fake, which is the movies, right? The movie magic and these different characters. We can tell that those are not real because God lives within us. And that is the way that we show our love. So now we know when we tell people that we love God, we know that we love God by how? Not putting any other God above him, not worshiping any other God. So let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father God. Thank you for your word today. We pray that anything that's not like you is removed and only your words are placed on our hearts for understanding, for correction, and for growth. We love you because you loved us first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys have a beautiful week and I'll see you next week. Bye.